a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars Reclamation, Episode 2, At Galaxy's End. Four Force users, among them a Jedi Padawan, a Jedi Knight, a Jedi Master, and an untrained Force Sensitive, flee the Imperial Prison Barge Purge, following mysterious hyperspace coordinates. Their destination unknown, they trust in the Force to guide them through the furthest reaches of the Outer Rim. Meanwhile, the Imperial Inquisitor, Third Sister, revealed to be the lost Padawan of Jedi Knight Jace Tyro, pursues them with a contingent of deadly purge troopers, determined to snuff out the last hope of rekindling the Jedi Order. We pan down past stars. A streak of light, barely perceptible, flits by. A ship has just passed by in hyperspace. In the swirling blue and white tunnel of light speed, a stolen Imperial shuttle hurtles towards its unknown destination. Inside are four Force users. Jace, we're going to start with you. The... It's been mere minutes since the landing bay disappeared behind you. Just a few minutes since you dueled with a lightsaber. Just a few minutes since you saw the face of your Padawan for the first time in years. And she stared back at you with nothing but malice. What's going through your mind as you catch your breath, clutching the hilt of your deactivated lightsaber? Catching his breath is just the case. Uh, the trip through hyperspace has almost been like one giant held breath for Jace. And the feeling of them hurtling through the stars at a speed beyond recognition uh, away from his former Padawan uh, is the very epitome of how Jace feels like being ripped away into the far flung corners of the galaxy, into darkness. He slumps into a, uh, a slick black leather chair. This is Imperial decor after all. Uh, and he's able to sort of just close his eyes and just try and take a moment. Nearest you is likely Zerdarin, the Padawan with whom you just stood shoulder to shoulder with in a lightsaber duel. Zur, you are not sure why, but you just feel angst flowing through the Force connection from Jace. You feel this guilt, sadness, shock just reverberating off of him in waves. And you too, as you catch your breath, holding your lightsaber hilt, what's going through your mind? What are you doing as you recover from this fight? The emotional intensity is is high uh, for Zer, not just from the uh, force connection flowing from Jace, but the adrenaline from the fight of the escape. And then feeling the force, uh, now that they've left, this suppressive field of the third sister coming back into full force, almost heightening everything, uh, getting used to the dulled feeling of the force and a connection, trying to fight through that field. Now suddenly having that uh, depressor gone, uh, the force whoo, kind of rushes back into his sensation uh, with it, kind of a whirl of everything. Uh, and he would just kind of be sitting uh, idly, trying to like control this sudden like rush of adrenaline and now sudden heightened awareness and thought from himself and from uh jace next to him uh and we just kind of like turn over to jace just say uh straight up who who was that person jace uh looks up and briefly and unintentionally uh makes eye contact with the jedi master uh perhaps further forward in the cockpit uh, but then looks back to Zer. 
that is someone that I lost a long time ago. But I didn't quite know it was to that extent. She was my Padawan. Zura will try to like fight back uh, like a look of shock that'll come over his face, which will like quickly fade into concern, uh, confusion. Like he can't help but like think of his own master who now he has not seen uh, for some time as well of like the failing that it would be from him to his master if he were to turn. Uh, and then like I imagine still feeling that guilt uh, from you uh, who will lend his own guilt to the force sensation in the area. Uh, as he like realizes that he's touched a much deeper nerve than perhaps he wanted to, um, and will just kind of fall slightly quiet, uh, just kind of like nod to you. I'm Sensing sorry. that withdrawal, Jace uh, looks to you, Zer, and says, "You fought well and you stood strong. The force was with you. You did well." It's with all of us. Thank you. It was an honor to fight by someone of your caliber. That goes for everyone here, I'll just kind of say into the ship. I presume there will be much more to come very soon. They'll want to know where we went. And at that, Jace says, speaking of that, where are we going? And he's going to cast that question up further into the cockpit of the uh, the shuttle. Yeah, and inside the cockpit, Korra Vask and Quinway Mox sit. Quinway, I imagine, still probably slumped slightly over the control console as he was wounded in his duel with the Purge Trooper. Yeah, and actually in that moment, I think Korra would realize that the um, the numbers that somehow came out of her subconscious into her mind, the numbers that she placed into the nav computer, the numbers that serve as coordinates pointing the way to wherever we are going, stop reverberating through her mind. And she looks over maybe, or glances over, and you would find that uh, Quinway is unconscious in the seat next to you, from his wound to the chest that he took from the security back at the purge. Cora seems about to answer your question, but the sudden silence and the shift in feeling that she's gotten from Quinway turns her attention from the blur of stars ahead to the man to her right. Oh, oh no, uh, med, med pack, med pack now. Someone get med pack. Azura will leap to his feet uh, rather quickly. Uh, in his box uh, of his old things, he actually did carry a med pack is one of the things that I bought. Uh, so he would kind of rush over, uh, just like he would just bring the entire box of all of his stuff, not like wanting to take the time to like look through anything uh, then and just kind of like dump it on the floor uh, hurriedly, uh, begin sorting through it and grab the med pack. Uh, but then kind of like sheepishly look up to you as if like, begging that you know how to use them perhaps <laughs> better than him uh, he's not trained in much medicine yeah Cora like takes the the bag and kind of rips it open with her teeth uh, pulls out the implements uh, and kind of there's the 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 gray clothing that we're all wearing that has the bloody hole in it on Quinway's chest uh, and she begins pulling the bits of cloth out and applying the med pack to it. Uh, what do I roll for this? How do uh, these so work? So you're gonna roll medicine and you're looking for a 10 or better. Uh, to remove one wound. To remove one wound, yeah, correct. Somebody okay. else is on page 13 of Hyperspace D6. <laughs> that was a fluke, really. <laughs> 11. Nice. nice. So I rolled, I rolled one one and I was fired. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not 
with expertise, but with care, you are able to administer this med pack. Um, you see that the wounds that uh, Quinway sustained are uh, more like burns in nature, uh, having been um, stabbed and slashed at with a force pike, uh, which delivers these painful shocks uh, upon contact. And so you're able to uh, apply this uh, this gel to these burns that soon begin uh, healing the wounds and at least stabilizing Quinway. Uh, whether or not he wakes up is up to Barker, but he is at least uh, out of danger of uh, uh, further succumbing to the wounds. No, oh, he seems to be muttering very softly, uh, incoherent uh, jargon, and uh, just off sentences that you can't quite place glue the syllables to uh with uh, to form uh but he stays out there is a a small sort of bunk set into one side of the shuttle uh for emergency medical procedures uh if you would like to move him to a more comfortable position definitely Cora's is no jedi but she knows her way around a ship you get him moved over there, uh, maybe even pull the blanket up over him, and he uh, continues sleeping there. Uh, the three of you now stand in the loading bay of the shuttle. Uh, through the cockpit, the glimmering blue-white of hyperspace continues to funnel past at blinding speeds. Uh, the coordinates, the numbers that you inputted, Cora, they've they've left your mind since you put them into the computer, and Again, you're not sure where they even came from, but you know that they stopped echoing in your mind as soon as Quinway Mox lapsed into unconsciousness beside you. Yeah, Cora looks at Quinway, who is unnaturally still, not like the meditation he'd done earlier. And it gives her an uneasy feeling to see him in such a state. And then she looks back to the blur of hyperspace. And then she shrugs. I don't know where we're going. Sorry. There is nothing to be sorry for. At least we are moving away from at least the initial threat. I put numbers in. Um, I don't know where they are. They weren't my numbers. Possibly Quinway gave them to me. The the mind talky thing. I don't know. This is still very new to me. It was either him, one of us, and he'll kind of like give that nod of like not me, uh, or somebody else on the ship, uh, and he'll kind of like leave that hanging perhaps more ominously than he uh, intends to. <laughs> Cora kind of gets made paler. She's like, oh. We should trust in our instincts. And this to me seems like the only choice we have right now. If it did come from the master, I'm sure there's a very good reason for why he would choose that place. I agree. We should trust in what we have. What we have now is each other. And that'll have to do for now. Perhaps for a while. Um, Jace is going to make his way to the cockpit and he's going to look down at the dials. Is there any way to determine like how long we have left on this journey before we're going to yeah. reach this destination? <clears throat> Uh, I would say you could um, make a oh, no. like a planets check, a knowledge check with planets. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, let's see. I will... either that or an astrogation check, mechanical. Okay. Let's see what you know, Jedi Knight, Jace Tyree. Yes. I'm just trying to find... Oh, there it is, planets. Okay, I'm going to try planets. Cool. 
Uh, 11. You don't know much about where you're going, but you know it's even deeper into the Outer Rim than you already were. Maybe even past the mapped galaxy. But you know you have roughly two hours in hyperspace before you arrive. Chase um, feels uh, his breath catch in his throat again for to wander outside the borders of the known galaxy is an incredibly risky thing to do. Um, but then he considers it's better than having your back against the wall. And he looks back at these uh, individuals gathered and he tries, tries his very best to trust in the fact that they must have been brought together for a reason. Because if they haven't been, what is this for? And he looks to Cora and he says, thankfully you are able to navigate your way around a cockpit. Will you be able to land us when we arrive? He asks, not certain. Uh, give me like an hour to read a manual and <laughs> I'll get back to you. I'm sure there's some instructions somewhere. The well, it seems we... manual in the glove, glove compartment for the... Right, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it was like two years out of date. It's got yeah. a coffee stain on it. Yep. It's not even a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we have two hours, so make doubly sure. You've already shown connection with the Force. Trust in that will guide, guide us down just as well as anything else. Oh, that reminds me. I got a box. Uh, the, I guess it's the Force, I don't know, that tingly feeling that, that tells you to look or to duck, or to run. There was a box, and I had the, the feeling. And so I picked up the box, and she, like, looks around for where she dropped it in the cockpit in her hurry to punch in the numbers. Yeah, this uh, Durasteel little, like, a chest, but not quite, like, a footlocker size. It's sort of rattling around on the plating of the cockpit. Uh, covered in dust and dirt. She'll pick it up and kind of unceremoniously blow on it. <laughs> As you blow the dust off, you see that emblazoned on the lid of this chest is a symbol. Uh, two wings sweeping up over a lightsaber ignited at the center. Oh. I think Maybe this is one of yours. It is not anything that I recognize. The symbol, of course, but the box itself? No. Same. That's not mine, but the symbol definitely comes from <coughs> the same place. I mean, if it's Quinways, do I open it? Do we just wait till he wakes up? He had all of his things, didn't he? The same as us. I don't know why they would separate our boxes into different places when everything else was so orderly. Must have been someone else's. If it spoke to you, Cora, you should answer. Okay, but you mean open it, not like talk to it, right? Yes, definitely open the box. <laughs> okay. Again, still new on this thing. Uh, and, and she'll kind of hesitantly like open the box and do that thing where you like lift it up a little and kind of look inside, like make sure nothing's going to pop out. Yeah, you open it up and at first it just looks like junk. It looks like random pieces, um, wires, fuses, switches, buttons, things like that just random electronic equipment but as you sort of open it wider all of the pieces kind of become one in your mind and you realize that they all follow this cylindrical sort of shape and you realize that these are lightsaber parts 
many lightsaber parts just sort of tossed unceremoniously into this box. Oh. I think it makes a lightsaber. So like like show it to you guys. Yes. I think there's a moment where Jace kind of does um some acrobatics with his eyes, just checking every if if the usual ingredients are in there. So he's looking for something that could uh, work as an emitter, uh a switch, a a housing for the crystal. And yeah. is is there a yeah. Yeah, you see you just you know, taking a brief glance, you see that there's probably enough parts in here to make a couple lightsabers if you wanted. Uh you're not sure exactly, but there are multiple different kinds of parts. It's almost like if a Jedi came in with a non-functioning or broken lightsaber or they picked a lightsaber off of a dead Jedi, they just sort of tossed it into one of these boxes for storage and later probably to be melted down and used in one of the Empire's war machines. If whatever that was in this box was speaking with you, Cora. It means that there is a crystal amongst this collection, this collection that is connected to you in some way. I told, I told uh, the third sister, I'm not a Jedi. The Jedi is the teaching. That call is you. It is part of you and everything. Look for it. Cora almost begins to rummage through the box. But she thinks of Quinway and how he sat cross-legged with his eyes closed. And so she sits down on the floor, cross-legged, the box in her lap. And she closes her eyes and puts her hand into the box. At first, there's nothing except maybe disappointment on your part, Cora, but soon enough, the white noise of the shuttle innards, the droning of its hyperspace engines, the slow breaths of Quinway asleep in the corner give way to something else. Blaster fire. You smell smoke. You feel explosions rumbling in the distance, reverberating through your boots, and as you open your eyes, you find yourself not sitting cross-legged in the loading bay of a shuttle. No, you're standing on a battlefield. You look around and you see thousands of battle droids clashing with thousands of clone troopers in their distinct white armor. At the head of these clone troopers, you see... Jedi. They whirl their lightsaber blades, deflecting bolts as they lead the charge. Clone troopers rush past you, not seeing you, running through you. Suddenly they stop. The Jedi at their head, a robed woman, she turns, looking over her shoulder as the clone troopers raise their rifles. She says, so it is to be this then. She turns as the troopers open fire. But as she dies, she ignites the lightsaber. What color is it, Taylor? It's blue. The blue blade (laughs) emits forth and suddenly you're back in the landing bay and you feel in your hand the cold edges of something crystalline. And as you pull it out of the box, you see a blue kyber crystal in your palm. Yeah, she kind of looks at it. I know where it's from. Where? Okay, so I don't know where, where, but I sort of... No, where 
there was a woman and and she had a blue lightsaber and there were battle droids and she died. Many, many Jedi died that day. In the war, even. Did you see what the planet looked like? The planet? I don't know. I was kind of looking at the woman. He left this for you. She didn't Maybe she know didn't know. She doesn't need to know who you are. The Force has a way of bringing things to where they need to be, whether that's people, objects, ideas. She might not have known that she was leaving it for you, but it knew either way that it was going to find you. And it has. It's a strange thing about these crystals. There's no coincidence. There's no accidents. You find them when, how, and where you need to. I guess I better get started then. Go ahead, Barker. <laughs> Emotion, ignorance, passion, chaos, death. Emotion, ignorance, passion, chaos, death. Emotion, ignorance, passion. The words flood through Quinway's mind. Light speed makes the galaxy small. Do not feel safe just yet, he looks up in his dreams and he sees his master walking ahead of him. I have something for you, but we must be quick. There's a flash and a breath and he's minutes in the future. He's kneeling before his master who holds out two stones, one blue, one green. He grips the green one tightly, breathes in quickly. No, nope, not just yet. His master says, repeat the words again, she says, and Quinn Wei repeats emotion, ignorance, passion, chaos, death. She touches his shoulder and says, someday, old and afraid become one in the same. At that point, it is the duty and destiny of a Jedi to become one with the force. His breath quickens and she says, it is well to be afraid. It is well to be afraid. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. And he breathes deeply in an infinite breath, a breath through space and time and ages. And then he awakens in bed alone, grasping his fist around a crystal that's not there. Emotion, ignorance, passion, chaos, death, peace. And he rests. He looks at his wound and sees that it's been tended to. It seems like coincidence or maybe destiny that Quinway wakes up shortly after you hold this crystal for the first time, Cora. He sits up slightly and looks over to you. Thank you. What? Oh, you're awake. Thank you. Of course. I feel the same in you. Something happened. Yeah. Where are we going? You tell me. <laughs> he looks puzzled as you ask him. 
and tries to stand and it no, no, hurts. No, 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 stay, stay. He does. He no. stays. There were numbers in my head. Where we're going yet. It seems the force has given her some instinct. Uh, the puzzled face turns to a, a smirk and he laughs for a moment. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, well, I don't know where we're going, but I'm anxious to find out. You don't, you don't know? I'm so surprised. What? Well, yeah, why am I surprised at anything anymore? <laughs> I got a glowing crystal in my hand. Okay, nothing surprised me. You're right. I give up. <laughs> crystal. Yeah, she like shows it to you. Mm-hmm. I promise you weren't asleep that long. Good. But I'll get a few more minutes if it's all the same to you. As long as you're awake when we land, wouldn't want to hit the surprise without you. I will leave that to you. And the old man falls asleep. By Jace's calculations, you have roughly an hour and 45 minutes until you arrive at these mysterious hyperspace coordinates. You have time to uh, rest, eat, drink, build lightsabers, whatever it is that you want to do with the resources that you have. The shuttle is luckily fully stocked uh, with all sorts of emergency rations, uh, med packs, things of that nature. Uh, So have at it. What would you guys like to do in the time that you have? Yeah, out of sleep or meditate or anything else, building a lightsaber right now seems like a really good idea. Looking at all of the uh, the parts that are um, uh, sort of, I like to think that perhaps we've we've lined them into uh, different groups so we can see what's there. But uh, Jace instinctively lets Cora step to the uh, the workbench first. For uh, there may be other uh, pieces of equipment here that are significant to this crystal, perhaps. So he lets her go first and sees if her instinct will take her in the right direction. Uh, yeah, I guess, I, can I roll to make a lightsaber? <laughs> yeah, I. you don't even need to roll for it. You can just sort of describe what's happening. Uh, you have, luckily, three Jedi on board who have built lightsabers before, uh, but... Uh, you can describe what it looks like and uh, what pieces you choose with which to build your lightsaber. Um, so for viewers, we're using uh, in hyperspace D6, there are rules for building your own lightsaber and there are some different sort of features that you could pick. Saber design, so you could do like a standard saber, or like a cross guard or a double bladed lightsaber, uh, things like that. So uh, if you're interested in building your own lightsaber, <coughs> you should definitely check out hyperspace D6. So Cora has the the box of many things uh, sitting on the the workbench to her left, and the crystal directly in front of her. And it's it's almost warm now, and she's not sure if it's from having held it tightly in her palm for so long, or if there's something different about it. And she begins to search through this box. Each time her fingers touch an item, she picks it up and kind of closes her eyes for a second. No, and puts it back. She might pick up something else, go, I don't even know what that is. Uh, and she, she might uh, look around for, for Zur or Jace who are probably doing their best not to hover too closely. And with a little bit of help from them to focus a crystal and to get the emitter lined up just right. 
she will carefully craft a lightsaber. It's mostly a dull silver color. It has inlays of brass that look uh, like columns going up it. And it fits just right in her hand. Okay, now what? Well, you must test it. She presses the button. A blue blade springs forth, white hot at its center. It's small-ish, you notice. Whereas another Jedi's blade might be easily a length and a half of his arm, this one is smaller, perhaps less unwieldy. She turns it left, then right, spins and watches the swirl of light. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> As the blade well, ignites, uh, Zer will be kind of like brought back. Uh, he'll like see uh, long ago, like his own master uh, teaching him to make his lightsaber, like falling through the process. Um, and then as his blade springs to life, uh, his master, uh, ever the uh, driving teacher, always looking uh, for the next step, even in moments of triumph, the better, uh, will like here, like a uh, from behind him as his master fires a blaster, he'll have to like turn instinctively to send the blast uh, flying away. Uh, and as he feels this uh, memory, uh, he'll just kind of like turn back uh, and like pick up Cora's blaster from on the table, uh, like flip the setting to stun just in case. Uh, okay. And behind her, we'll point the blaster at her and try to shoot her. Yeah, I want to do the, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> do I roll for that? Uh, so we could either have uh, Jeff roll against your parry, or you could roll a melee uh, test to try and deflect it. I'm happy with either of those. Uh, let's do a melee to make it more active on your end. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Eleven. You get the lightsaber up just in time, and the blast kind of redirects and harmlessly splashes against the bulkheads of the shuttle. You feel this surge of adrenaline as you realize that there was no thought that just went into that action. It was pure instinct, just the force. And if you weren't a believer before... Cora, that that little tingle at the back of your neck, the hair is rising on your arm, that voice in your head your entire life telling you to run, to duck, to go left, to go right. The force has always been there. And just as it helped you duck out of seedy bars just in time, now it helps you deflect blaster bolts with a sword made of light. There's the moment of surprise and then just a grin. You're going to have one of those things you'll have to learn how to use it. Training starts right now and will continue indefinitely. Yeah, thanks for the warning. <laughs> Vibe check. The force warned you. Yeah, I guess it did. The people we're going to have to, the people we're going to be running from aren't going to give you much warning either. You have to continue to hone that instinct. 
their shots will be less kind than mine. I guess you better up your game. Yeah, Zora will just kind of smile at that. Jace um, uh, watches the conversation for a moment and then his mind drifts elsewhere. He steps over to the um, remaining bits and pieces from the box uh, and his eyes fall upon a trigger. Uh, he unhooks his lightsaber hilt from his belt and he runs his rough worn thumb across the design that's roughly carved into the hilt of his uh, half-burned lightsaber. There is a, uh, a relief of a valley with a breeze moving through it. And he closes his eyes and then he's there. And he sees his apprentice's face. And then he opens his eyes again. In time, he had actually, whilst his eyes were closed, he had actually fixed this trigger into the lightsaber, uh, giving it a dual phase function, meaning that he can move back and forth like a breeze. Uh, Zer, Quinway, either of you want to make any modifications to your saber? Quinway has made his modifications, and the only remaining modifications to happen uh, will be to Quinway himself, he's sure. Yeah, Zer will take a moment to... Uh take his lightsaber apart, uh, kind of modifying it in pieces, making small repairs where damage has like, accrued over time. Um, and then use some of these pieces to kind of modify it in different parts. Um, and uh, we'll uh, eventually put it back together, uh, turning, turning it on, uh, letting the yellow blade uh, spring forth, uh, making some modifications to like, the length of the handle, uh, its weight or weightlessness, uh, rather. And the length uh, so that it'll it'll be more suited to deflection. Awesome. By the time the saber modifications have finished, you maybe have 20 or 30 minutes until you reach your destination. Anything else that you'd like to do with your time, let me know. Otherwise, we'll uh, find out where we're going. Uh, can I put another med pack on Quinway? You can, yeah. Give me a medicine check. Oops. I'll check it out later. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Eleven. That seems to be my number tonight. Yeah, yeah apparently. <laughs> when you got four dice, there's a lot of combinations. <laughs> but eleven is uh, that's the way to go. Uh, so you're able to uh, continue patching up uh, Quinway um, to the point where uh, the burns are just sort of faded uh, scar tissue now. Um, Quinway, you feel uh, sort of a tightness in your chest where the scar tissue is, but uh, you feel very little pain uh, with the uh, administration of these two mid-packs. It's not his first time being healed like this, but um, he he's never been wounded like this either. So uh, he looks down and there's a, again, it looks very gracious and even surprised at how quickly it healed. But he sits up. Take it easy, Mox, okay? <laughs> he says nothing, but he nods. There's a beeping from the console in the cockpit. Wait, 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 wait. Telling you that you are reaching your destination. Uh, Cora will uh, unceremoniously dash towards the pilot's seat and uh, 
sit down and try and scroll through any sort of landing procedure um, as she braces herself for that drop from hyperspace. You do your pre-flight, pre-landing checks, and suddenly <clears throat> you come back into real space. There's a jolt that all of you feel. Your stomach flips as your bodies immediately adjust to existing again within real space. And Cora, the field of the cockpit is immediately filled with what looks like a Venator class Star Destroyer just <laughs> immediately filling your field of view. Please make a pilot check. Oh no. <laughs> I think whether or not any of you register the sight ahead of you, you feel Cora's sudden panic. Math. Uh, Twelve. Wait, nope. Thirteen. <coughs> Wait, you... 14. I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> 15, so 16. Is 14. Uh, <laughs> just tell me when I hit the target number. <laughs> you uh, just immediately spin the flight yoke uh, to the left, pulling back on the throttle <clears throat> and sort of bank up along the side of this Venator class Star Destroyer, which you immediately realize is derelict, thankfully. Uh, you see holes pierced through it and you realize that you've come out of hyperspace into a relative ship graveyard as you bank up alongside the Star Destroyer and level the shuttle off. You see sprawling before you a field of debris, uh, just shards of metal spinning uh, in every direction, uh, Republic ships and Separatist ships. The remains of a battle during the Clone Wars and you see on the other side of this field of debris a planet. A brown and green marble set against a backdrop of stars. The only celestial body uh, within eyesight or sensor range. Uh, we're here. Are we able to get any readings? Cora punches some buttons. Do I detect any power signals from any of the ship's life signs? Do I have that ability on a shuttle? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, if you want to just give me a basic computer's checks to run some sort of scans across the field and uh, into the planet, you can do so. I would love to give you a computer's check. <laughs> if I can just get my cat fingers out of the way. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Um, well, the bad news is my force die is a one. Had to happen eventually. But 11 total. I, really? <laughs> Again? Yeah, I know, 11 total. <laughs> it's good that like 11 is like a decent role in this game. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you, you run some sort of basic scans across this field of debris. You don't detect any uh, active sort of power signals. It seems like it's... Uh, this was a battle that happened during the height of the Clone Wars, uh, and all of the ships that have been left here uh, have long been abandoned, uh, just derelict hunks of steel floating through space, um, and likely too far out in the Outer Rim to be worth sending salvage crews out to find. Uh, and then the planet itself, though you're far out in the Outer Rim, there is some information in the uh, shuttle's astrogation computer about this planet it's called osis and if you say this aloud i imagine well maybe the jedi have heard of it uh if uh quinway jace and uh zur want to give me planet checks uh let me know what you get looking for well, a actually that's no need i just googled it so Oh. <laughs> That's Wikipedia once again. Uh, Wikipedia. Yeah. Quinway is on his phone. Like, I got it, I got it right here, guys. <laughs> These freaking boomers, man. Yeah. <laughs> so Zer is trying to, like, recall uh, what this uh, planet, as he hears the name, but, like, as they see the Star Destroyer in view, like, he'll, like, hear his, like, senses around him will start to, like, fade. 
and I'll just see uh, inside that Star Destroyer visions of the same uh, prison they had broken away from, the woman with the red lightsaber, the fire of Stormtrooper blaster bolts, uh, them trying to narrowly escape with their life, that rush of emotion of adrenaline coming back to him as though he were there uh, right now. So I actually roll with one less die on basically everything I'll do today because uh, Zur is haunted. Uh, it's the uh, burden that I took. Uh, as he'll like, remember the blaster fire of the Empire killing his master of being here trying to escape the prison. Uh, he'll be overcome by that. Uh, so I only get a five because I only get one die with the minus one. Jace, you know Osis. And Quinway, you've heard of it, though you're having trouble rem- trying to remember why you've heard of it. Jace, you know that Osis is... It has a storied history with the Jedi Order. At one point, it was a great repository for knowledge for the Jedi Order, the ancient Jedi Order. Uh, this is a place where teachings from a thousand generations were stored. And then it was the site of a great battle between the Jedi Order and the Sith Empire, as led by Exar Kun. The deployment of a super weapon left Osis, previously a temperate, beautiful world, with a barren landscape and a toxic atmosphere. The world was abandoned for many centuries before it became an expedition site for the Jedi Order, who wished to plumb through the ruins and find what they could about the ancient Jedi. Since the Clone Wars and the rise of the Empire, the planet has been abandoned. Jace is very quick to uh, relay that information. He looks down at this murky green sphere in the darkness uh, and he closes his eyes as if listening for the sounds of battle or the the chants of meditation uh, chakras that the ancient Jedi would whisper as their meditation would lead them deep. You know, it's, it's a cliche, but the force is so big. It's always been there. The way of the Jedi has changed again and again over the course of centuries. We may find much down there, but it is a place of darkness. Much conflict shrouds anything that was good here. This would be a risk, but the Force has led us here for a reason. Would you go? And he addresses that to the whole uh, crew. Zuri will try to uh, get a hold on like the cloud uh, that's like formed in his mind, like slowly shoving it back down into some uh, deeper place. Uh, Probably not the best way to handle it in this moment, but he needs to like make sure that he's sharp uh, for this. And I'll just kind of nod hesitantly, uh, much more so than he's been uh, for a while. Um, If this is where we've been brought, then it must be for something. How do you remember this place? He asked Jace. I feel as if there's emptiness where the memory of this world should be. There's a uh, a ring of a blast of fire that echoes in Jace's mind. Uh, and he looks at Mox and he says, the battles, the memories, they all seem to merge into one. First, there was a great battle during the Clone Wars. And then a long, long time ago, an even greater battle still. 
uh, would I know this place just from because I, I just did a knowledge roll. It doesn't necessarily mean that Jace has been there, does it, Matt? Not necessarily, um, though. Uh, with having been established in the Jedi Order, it could be that you were uh, that you did visit this place because the Jedi Order was excavating it for many decades before the Clone Wars broke out, um, and it had to be abandoned. I was here right before this became a area of conflict for the mass evacuation. The Jedi tried to recover as much information as they could before they had to withdraw into near orbit to await the Armada of the Federation and indeed all of the Separatists. Uh, so real quick, Matt, you mentioned that the atmosphere here was pretty jacked. Will mm -hmm. we need some sort of breathing equipment? Yeah, you guys will all need breathers. Uh, luckily, uh, you find in the shuttle um, that there is a compartment with uh, six sets of breathers that you can put on. Yeah, I think uh, kind of as they're talking, um, Zero would just kind of like tap on his like Keldor uh, mask, just kind of like look over. This should keep me going okay down there. If we're gonna go, but we'll need to find something for you. I'm sure they'll it'll kind of like just begin like thinking out uh with the force, uh with his just kind of trying to think on where and he'll just kind of begin like pulling drawers before until he finds those breathers that you mentioned, uh where he'll just like pass them out. Everybody else. You'll need these. Thank you. Yes, you certainly are already equipped. So do you want me to land down there? Uh, do you got a favorite hemisphere? I don't know where I'm going. Run a scan for anything. Power source. Or just go with your gut instincts, whichever you find first. Cora will start the scan, um, having already put their ship in kind of a low orbit. And then she'll not quite meditate, but it's like she's feeling that scan herself. She has her hand on the console of the ship and she kind of squints her eyes closed like she's trying to concentrate. And as the sensors sweep across the planet, she feels them hitting crevices, ravines, mountains. The marble feels alive. What does she find? Roll sense, please. Oh. Three. You reach out with the force, unsure of what you're even looking for. And though you're not sure where to go. You're left with a feeling of foreboding. A chill runs up your spine looking at this planet. Based on that feeling and what Jace has told you, you know that great things have happened on this planet and terrible things in equal measure. This is a planet of light and dark out of balance. The scanner beep, 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 picks up a faint signal emanating from what looks like a ruin on the northern hemisphere of the world. She points to where the dash of the ship is glowing. There.
Are we sure? Jace is um, just going to close his eyes. Um, the the bridge between everyone's mind still hopefully intact. He's just waiting for any kind of hesitation from anyone because he believes he senses it. Um, he looks to Cora. You've brought us here safely. And you can land us safely. Believe. And all will be well. Cora directs the ship out of orbit and towards the dot in the northern hemisphere. As you dip into the toxic atmosphere of Osis, you feel energy sort of outside of the ship, racking the air around it. Osis is a planet of storms, of ionized air, a dangerous place. And as you disappear into the clouds, we slowly pan over to the field of debris through which you just flew. <laughs> a shuttle comes out of hyperspace. Inside, a purge trooper, his helmet off, walks across the plating. Ching, 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 ching. He comes to stand behind a figure in a robe. Lady Inquisitor, we have arrived. The planet is Osis. They have descended to the surface. Shall we follow? The figure turns and we see a mask of glass with a spiderweb shatter through it. All of it fused together hastily. The third sister says, no. We shall see what they are looking for. And then we shall take it from them. And that is where we will take a quick break before we find out what waits on the surface of Osis. Uh, everyone, please stick around. We'll be right back. Um, there are links down in the description to check out Hyperspace D6 if you're interested. I'm going to let everyone sort of uh, introduce themselves and their characters, and then we're going to come back and continue the story. Uh, so we'll start up here with uh, Jace Tyro, played by Rob Coletta. Rob, go ahead. Hello, my name is Rob. Uh, I'm from the channel Performance Check, and once again, it is an absolute pleasure to be uh, in this game. Uh, I think uh, that scene where Cora was putting together her lightsaber and sensing which crystal uh, was calling, I think that was probably one of the best things ever. <laughs> games and out of games, I just thought it was wonderful. Um, yeah, continue to really enjoy the system and really loving the story, Matt. Uh, it's so compelling, and I'm so excited. Thanks, man. All right, Quinway Mox, played by Michael Barker. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. That was um, that reminded me a bit of uh, The Force Awakens when Rey discovers um, Anakin's lightsaber and just yep. goes through just a very quick sequence. And But it was unique. It was still different in that way. I love it. The battle scene um this is a really great system and if you're watching you should play it and you should run it and you should put it on youtube and share it to the absolute tabletop official group both this system and for our uh, dead man's guide kickstarter backers there's a lot of uh, content that's ready for you to run with it uh, on kickstarter so please run more games using these free resources mm -hmm. uh and of course in dead man's guide it's more uh if you've backed but uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and please, please, please run these games. All right. Zerdarin played by Mr. Jeff Judy. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just echo, uh, the sentiment both about running this game 
uh, it's great. Uh, the system's great. Um, and yeah, everything that Rob said as well of just this this game, uh, as Barker put in the chat at some point, like feels more Star Wars to me than like most Star Wars things that I've seen. Uh, like it just it managed to hit everything just like dead on in terms of the feel um, and the characters and like all you guys are great. Uh, yeah, this game is awesome. Great. And last but certainly not least, Korvask, played by Taylor Jeffrey. Uh, my main shout out has to go to Matt's sound effects because <laughs> holy crap. Uh, I'm not good at many things, but I am good at that. I thought earlier today, I was like, I should practice my sound effects for Star Wars. And I thought, no. I'll let Matt do it. And what do you know? It's worked out for me. Uh, no, this game is great, uh, including Matt's sound effects. Uh, if you are watching this, stick around for more. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love the system. It's really intuitive, uh, which I like in the system. A lot awesome. of fun. Thanks, guys. So yeah, please stick around. There will be more when we come back. Okay, how do I? <laughs> there we go. All right, muting the mics. We'll be right back.
So as you descend through the uh, the toxic clouds, the toxic atmosphere of the planet of Osis, uh, Cora, you find the uh, the yoke is not it's not responding like it did up in space. You're kind of struggling with it. You feel it kind of jerking in one direction or the other. The lights on the console are flickering, fading. Uh, you see a lash of lightning sort of streak by across the windshield. And then this like rain just sort of becomes this curtain across the windshield. You're struggling to hold on uh, with the yoke. I need a pilot check, please. All right. Oh, my force does six. Ah, and that is a 10, not 11. Uh, going, going with the 10 for a change of pace. Uh, so you're able to keep on a steady course. You feel yourself uh, descending, um, but you're having to fly by instruments alone. The The windscreen is just completely uh, useless at this point with the clouds, the flashes of lightning, and uh, the rain just sort of sweeping up across it. Uh, but you manage to descend through the clouds and suddenly you can see the world of Osis sprawling out before you. You see uh, these canyons and eroded mountains and these sort of craggy badlands just splaying out in all directions. Um, this planet used to be beautiful. It used to have rivers and soaring mountains and forests of green. Uh, but during that great war between the Jedi Order and the Sith Empire... This planet was laid waste, left a husk of its former self. And as you descend and get closer to the surface, you sense that too. You sense the planet's pain. You sense it like you would the wound that Quinway suffered. Something that cannot be so easily patched up, however. Something that is breaking this planet to its very core. But you navigate down crest a uh, this span of broken hills bringing the shuttle in low and you see there on the horizon this tower and then another tower and this cluster of spires becomes evident and you see the crumbling ruins of what was once a great structure of some kind sprawled around it the remnants of an excavation years gone scaffolding and equipment vehicles hastily abandoned bodies too lay sprayed about both clone troopers and droids you bring the shuttle in low find a suitable landing spot you bring the landing gear down the wings on the shuttle fold up <laughs> And you feel yourself on solid ground for the first time in many hours. I think we're here again. Quinway puts on his breather. Let's make our way. Jace also uh, pulls over the breather over his uh, over his face, and he says, "The bond that we've created. Let us hold that tight. Do not let go. We do this together." And then he's gonna hit the switch uh, to uh, make the ramp start coming down. The ramp lowers with a hiss of steam as the pneumatic pistons pull it down, touching down onto the floor below. And there's a rush of wind as the recycled uh, air of the shuttle is pulled out into the toxic atmosphere of Osis. The ruins loom before you. Bridges and aqueducts leading to it from all directions this was once a hub of this world 
you can see the remains of what was once probably a great city that spiraled out from this central hub, now little more than skeletal husks. It's not clear, even in the historical records, what exactly Exar Kun brought to bear on this planet, but it was something great, something terrible. I don't remember. <laughs> Go ahead, Cora. Cora puts her hand out to, to Quinway's arm. And you feel more than hear her say, I'm a little frightened. He, almost speaking at the same time as you, repeats the words that come immediately to his mind. To face fear is the destiny of a Jedi, he says through his breather. Trying to, struggling to remember what this place was. He knows what the numbers should have meant. What he was told. What thought he was told. The future would lie there, but here it's just the past. You can sense the concern more than you can see it on his face. Cora looks from Quinway to the, the lightsaber hooked now to her belt. Might as well start learning the Jedi way. Lesson one. That lightsaber should be the last lesson. Cora, that faint signal that you detected aboard the shuttle, you're able to follow that using your data pad. It is faint, but you have a good idea of the general direction you need to head if you do intend to find it. Cora from behind her breather mask looks at the, the data pad and points up this way, I think. Azura will uh, kind of begin to step forward. Um, that sensation of, of pain uh, and fear uh, coming through strongly from the planet, and he's not sure how much of that fear uh, is his own uh, or Korra's or the planet's uh, memory of everything that's happened here, uh, the force and the wound that's come through, uh, but he'll do his best to stay it uh, regardless uh, and try to spend that same sensation of confidence through to the others as best as he can manage to wrangle it uh, and start heading after the sensor. You move into the circle of ruins and you soon come upon the remnants of an old battlefield. The white armor of the clone troopers that fell here has become discolored by the toxicity of the atmosphere taking on a strange green-yellow hue. You can see, as their bodies sort of lay splayed out on the ground, the skeletal remains of the clones within who decayed laying here where they fell. Left, too, are the husks of battle droids, blaster bolts punching holes through important modules that drop them. You step over the remains of this battlefield, feeling again that strange sense of foreboding. 
soon you find yourselves in the shadow of this Jedi temple, this ancient structure, older likely than the Republic that it served, a thousand generations of Jedi. The knowledge that they have once stored here. You move through the outer fringes of the ruins, seeing the remains of facades depicting great moments in Jedi history. You see depictions of strange ships that have sails unfurling from them, the earliest starships. The Jedi wield esoteric lightsabers with cables running to their belts, powering them. And even though the shapes, the figures, are alien to you, too ancient to comprehend, you feel a kind of kinship with these figures. You feel as though you are the current in a long line of Force users. People who have used the Force to try and better the galaxy. And then you come around the corner and you see another facade. This one depicting a towering figure. His face hooded. He holds a lightsaber with two blades. Exar Kun, the great betrayer of the Jedi Order. It was he who laid waste to this place initially. A strange breeze seems to blow through the ruin as you look upon the shadowed visage of this person. Through the mind link that you share, you all sense each other's fear and trepidation. From here, the path is uncertain. You can descend deeper into the temple or try and scale one of its towers to see if the signal is originating from there. Exar Kun was a Jedi that turned from the path and Jace catches his breath as he thinks about his apprentice. And though he's been doing his best to try and hide his feelings uh, from the mine bridge, there it's at this point of uncertainty that it's almost uh, hard not to miss those feelings. Thor will be overcome with uh, a similar sort of unease. Uh, I still think back uh, to the same person, uh, the, the sister, uh, but through different uh, memories of her sitting across the table from him, saying what it would be like, the power that could be gained, the influence if he were to help her, uh, and that the thought had crossed his mind. And like now seeing this mural of the betrayer uh, and feeling the fear, not just from himself, but from everybody else, will feel an intense rush of disgust and shame at his own self that he would even consider the tiniest hint of that option now that he's like felt so strongly the impact that that option has had, not just now, but echoing all through history. Uh, and I imagine feeling that unease uh, in himself uh, and then that connection over to Jace uh, he'll just look over, um, take a couple steps towards him, and he'll just put a hand on your shoulder and just kind of give a nod of understanding is probably too strong a word. He couldn't really fathom what you've gone through in the same way, but he'll just still give you that nod of it's going to be okay. We'll figure this out. Every Jedi walks their own path. That's true. But we are responsible for the people that we're supposed to protect and teach. I am responsible for the path that my apprentice walks now. Everything she does is the cost of my mistake. I failed. 
I failed her. <laughs> Look at the Jedi Order, where it is now. We've all failed. The burden at your feet lays at all of our feet and all of us. The pain, though much more personal for you, I imagine, is all of our pain now. The things that we've done before, they don't matter now. They've been done. And what she's done was her choice just as much as what we've done was ours. If you let that weigh upon you, he'll just kind of shake his head. We all know where clouded minds lead. They don't go to good places. You did not fail her. We may have failed collectively, but what we've done in the aftermath is our own burden to bear. She's walked her own path too, by her choice. You are wise beyond your years, Zer. There is hope for the Jedi yet. And he returns the uh, the clasp on the shoulder, um, throwing a look to the others, wanting to put that behind us for the moment. But this has left him a bit um, uh, out of sorts, so he will not be the one dictating which direction we go at this time. I think Sir at this point would be mostly trying to lean on instinct. Uh, that same sort of telltale feeling that's brought them this far. Uh, every every decision that they've made since leaving the ship has been guided, uh, fed to them through the Force. Uh, and unless somebody else had strong reasons, more concrete, to uh, go in any one direction, I think he would take a moment, block the mural out from his vision as he shuts his eyes uh, and tries to feel out uh, which way that subtle grasp will continue to pull them in. I was muted, sorry. Uh, give me a sense check if you would, sir. Uh, yes, sir. It's difficult for him to block out the uh, the fear uh, being so close to this spot of death um, and betrayal uh, and his haunt will continue to weigh on him, but that'll still give me a couple dice. <clears throat> As Zer, you're uh... trying this, you feel Cora's gaze upon you. And she kind of shuts her eyes and feels with you. And I'd like to aid you and add a dice to your pool. Nice. Very nice. Awesome. All righty. So um, everything all added up then with the extra dice. That is, uh, math is difficult. It's going to be 18 cents, actually, and wow. a six on my force die. Wow. On my destiny die. So not only do you feel a unmistakable pull to descend deeper into the ruins, into the darkness of this place, uh, to the point where you're probably going to have to break out some some torches or something in order to see. Uh, but the two of you, Cora and Zur, you sense something else, a presence within the temple, something lurking down there. <laughs> yeah, I guess you guys have lightsabers. You don't need torches. <laughs> Yeah, Zer will experience like this rush of of um, direction uh, mixed with that dash of the unknown, uh, the greatest fear, um, and feeling uh, Cora lend her sense out. Uh, I imagine will like look over uh, to see that same look of uh, 
surprise, like of clarity mixed with surprise in her eyes too. Uh, and we'll just say to the others, um, largely through the link, I imagine they'll be able to feel that emotional rush. Uh, there's something down there, down below. I don't know what it is, but this place was once a place of knowledge. I think some of that might still be here. Down further. We'll need to go. But we'll need to be careful. I don't know what looks down there, but I can feel it. Which means it's got some strength to it. but we'll do it together. So you descend deeper. You find yourselves descending down a spiral staircase. The light that filtered through the sort of pockmark ruins up above soon dims to the point where at least one of you will need to pull out a light source of some kind in order to light your way. The stairs themselves have crumbled away in places, forcing you to scale them or leap across. The trek is not necessarily a dangerous one, but by the time you reach the bottom of the stairs, you find yourselves tired, covered in sweat, the breathers rubbing painfully against your faces. You'd give anything for a breath of fresh air, but you know you won't get it for some time. Cool. So, Jeff, you pull out a glow rod? Yeah. Um, I imagine these corridors are perhaps not amazingly large. So to prevent damaging the structure, uh, the ruins... Um, and any potential risk of having lightsaber blades out uh, and the noise that they have bringing attention, uh, he'll pull out a glow rod from his supplies uh, and crack that on for a bit. Oh. Certainly a more subtle light source. Good. I was just about to ask if Jedi were supposed to be able to see in the dark because it is getting a little difficult to see the you know crumbling steps falling to our doom. You continue moving through the corridors, lit by the strange green glow coming from this glow rod that Zor holds. You move through corridors, sensing that signal where you're supposed to go, pulling you towards it. You pass through a large, what appears to be audience chamber these amphitheater-style seats sort of leading down into the center. There are more bodies here, clone troopers and droids. But you also see a skeletal robed figure. Burn marks on the robes. A Jedi fell here. I think Jace will approach uh, if no one else does. Um, he has a glow stick of his own, which he sort of cracks to ignite it. And uh, he lays it by the side of this um, skeletal remained. And um, just a, a, at a glance, can I tell if this uh, individual was killed with a blaster, a lightsaber? It looks like they were killed by blaster fire. Yeah, he uh, he makes that observation and looks and can seize the uh, the shared uh, instinct that everyone else has. Blaster fire did this. The uh, the general sense as we've gotten closer is Jace picking up on this feeling too. Yeah, I think you absolutely would be through the link that the four of you are sharing. 
it's going to sound like a weird question, but what does it feel like? <laughs> I don't know what 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 does it feel like? What what emotions are shared between you here as you sort of delve the darkness of this place? For sure, it's it's almost uh, like being pulled along by an invisible thread. It's not necessarily that he wants to step forward. In fact, most of him wants to step back. But that nagging tug continues to pull. And he knows that as long as he feels that, that this sense of unknown, uh, of worry, uh, of concern, uh, will never be gone. So he's forced along by his own uh, dreaded sense of curiosity uh, at what's hidden here. Uh, and that feeling, that subtle pull of the force, uh, that inescapable uh, whisper uh, still incessant in his ear. Um, but seeing this Jedi especially, uh, there will be kind of a somber uh, sensation that wash over him too. Um, knowing that people much older, much more skilled uh, and knowledgeable than he uh, were felled uh, here of all places and by blasters, not even by lightsabers, uh, kind of wash over him as well. Uh, that sense of curious dread uh, growing ever stronger. And that dread has sort of been in the background sort of droning at the edge of your perception the entire time. But as you sort of glance about this room and Jace, as you're sort of kneeling by this Jedi, you see the glint of steel at their side, covered in dust, stained with blood, but unmistakable, a lightsaber hilt clutched in a skeletal hand. And just as you see this, that dread that you're all feeling suddenly becomes panic. And Jace, you may just barely manage to heave yourself backwards as something huge lunges out of the darkness and swipes at you with a clawed hand. I need everyone to roll. Uh, what is it? Perception for initiative, please. I knew I had a bad feeling about this. <laughs> you have, you have. And that's just perception, right? Yeah, no. just, just no. straight perception, yep. Ooh, man, that hurts, sir. Ooh, okay. So, uh, Cora, you're going to be going first. That's good, because I was going to tell Jace that the thing he felt most from Cora was anticipation. She knew mm. that something was here, and she's been you're just waiting for, for that, that buzz to kick in at the base of her neck like it always does. Yeah. And it does, maybe maybe your lightsaber is snaps into your hand and you, you've got it ignited before this thing even really lunges out of the darkness. Like you're ready to go. Okay. Yeah, with, with no training to be had, it's pure instinct now. So initiative is gonna go Korra, Quinway, this thing, Jace, and then Zor. Uh, so Korra, you also got a six on the destiny die um what would you like to do with that this thing goes before jace and zur it does can i fix that 
Sure. Yeah, I'll, I don't know if I'll, I can bump I'll it down let, one or two slots or- I'll uh, let you bump it down one so Jace goes before it. Uh, yeah, I th so I think that what that feels like is the the instinct that feeling cat <laughs> that <laughs> the feeling of a cat butt three inches right. from your face <laughs> exactly uh, the that feeling of <laughs> um, of danger that she'd been waiting on that she knew was coming she almost telegraphs that to Jace who was yeah. closest to it uh, giving him a little bit more warning yeah so Jace that that feeling that Cora has described to you that instinct you feel that duck and you just sort of lunge backwards as this thing swipes at you uh, just you feel the claws whistling through the air mere inches from your face uh, as this thing moves to attack again um, you don't have a sense for what this thing looks like. It's sort of lit uh, starkly with the green of the glow rod that you laid on the ground and then just sheer darkness around it. Uh, but you get the sense that it's uh, about twice your height and has multiple limbs that are sort of swiping out of the darkness at you. Um, so Cora, you can actually take your turn here. Um, how many actions would you like to take? Um, I believe... I would I have a dumb question. Uh, what do I roll to shoot my blaster? To shoot your blaster would be right. Oh, there is you blasters. Just roll, you just roll blasters, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that would probably be her first action because mm -hmm. while this newfound Jedi instinct brings the lightsaber to her hand, uh, it is habit which causes her to draw the blaster with the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to roll with my little blaster cool uh do i roll to hit them and then damage nice. right that's correct yep yeah and you're you're rolling against this thing's dodge Ooh, that's a six on my force die to or destiny die to hit damn um dude kyle katarn style for 15 sure. total 15 total that hits for sure um go ahead and roll damage uh only four damage four damage okay this it just absorbs the blast you hit it but it's like its flesh just just kind of takes that kinetic energy and just redistributes it across its sort of leathery hide uh seemingly taking no damage from that shot uh okay quinway uh you see the shadow of this thing looming over jace uh and there's the shot from the blaster, this sort of splash of red as it hits it, you see like patches of sort of like blood red fur and then like leathery hide underneath. Uh, you see mm -hmm. the uh, the shadow of sort of this fanged visage as it uh, comes forward on multiple limbs. Quinway uh, puts aside the feeling of nausea from the uh, Jedi in the center of the room, holds his hands out in response uh <clears throat> the blaster bolt rings through his ears and conjures up memories but he puts those aside too he attempts to channel the force to bring down a large non-load bearing chunk of the ceiling onto this yeah. thing whatever it is uh, awesome. I think that's control, or is that alter? Uh, that'll actually be an alter check. Oh, sweet. That's so good. Um, <clears throat> 9, 14, 15 total. 15 total is enough. Um, let's go ahead and do... Uh, what? How many dice do you have an alter? F uh, th uh, 4D. Four. Let's go ahead and do 4D damage then. Oh, baby. Oh, damn it. I knew it was going to be that. Okay, one, two. That's two ones. So six, 12 total, which could have been 12 worse. total. You know yeah. what? That's enough to actually wound this thing. Yay. So what does that look like? Go ahead and describe it as you bring a chunk of stone down on top of this thing. 
So I bring out Glamdring and my staff, and I shout, "You!" Oh wait, hold on, sorry. Uh, the what it looks like... <laughs> <of you. laughs> what it looks like is um, a breach of white hot light from the world above is opened into this room where this chunk of stone fell from the ceiling a very slender light not big not big enough to climb out of but something that reaches all the way to the surface and uh this you i i like to think that we hear like a howl or some sort of wounded sound what what does it sound like when it makes that oh man you're gonna make me do this uh yeah, I am. it's like <laughs> it goes as the thing sort of smashes into it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that shaft of light sort of coming down uh, now bathes this thing in light and you get a good look at it. Um, I'll go ahead and put uh, that in the chat here. Did not expect that. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> wow. So uh, this thing uh, kind of clambers forward out of the rubble that has fallen on top of it. You see blood trailing from uh, where these chunks of stone have hit. Um, and that brings us to Jace. You actually get to go before this thing, uh, thanks to uh, Cora warning you. Uh, how many actions would you like to take on your turn? So, Jace, um, oh, absolutely, that uh, instinct of Cora's was the very thing that saved his life. He was able to duck as this explosion of uh, feral aggression is just uh, sent their way. Uh, he's going to ignite his blue lightsaber, and he's going to take two swings of the lightsaber at this creature, uh, positioning himself in front of it. So, so minus, one. minus one die on both of those checks for the two actions. Yes. Okay, so that's 16 for the first. Hit. And 15 for the second. Also a hit. Yes, excellent. Okay, bear with me one second. Lightsaber is six, right? Six damage, yep. Sorry. Okay. Never apologize, Rob. Never apologize. Uh, that's 17 for the first strike as he brings the brilliant blue blade across it. And the next one is 14 points of damage. Your lightsaber is <laughs> as you uh, swing at this thing. And there's a just this flash of charred flesh as you bring it across this thing's torso and you immediately smell that familiar smell of a lightsaber sort of hacking through something biological. This thing again howls and sort of staggers backwards, uh, sort of bringing up one uh, limb to shield itself uh, from the, the brilliant glow that has just erupted immediately in front of its face. All right, it is this thing's turn. Jace, you are the closest. Uh, it is going to attack you twice. Okay. So what do you what do you need from me? Uh, uh, I'm gonna need uh, your I'm gonna need your uh, da. No, I'm gonna need your parry. Parry. That's right. Don't forget your dual lightsaber. Maybe that can help you. I didn't actually elect what function it would be on currently. Uh, let's gotcha. see. For some reason, I, I must have deleted <laughs> that. I don't know why. Bear with me one second. Uh, it's going to be five. Uh, oh, no, times five. It's times three times five, so 15. Sorry, I deleted no, it like kidding. an idiot. You're kidding. Oh, man. Uh, so that is one hit for me. And then okay. there's another one. Uh, and that is not a hit. So I got one hit. Let me roll my damage here. This thing does quite a bit of damage. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, dear. 
8, 12, 16, 19 damage. So go ahead and <sighs> reduce that by your soak. Yep. And then so my soak left. is 12. Let's okay. see. So seven left. Seven left, yeah. Ouch. So that will, I believe, will give you at least a wound. Let me check here. Yeah. What's your stamina? Easy. Uh, my stamina, let's see. I can't. It's probably four. I'm trying to see where my stamina is. I'm losing my mind here. It's under, um, it should be under strength. It's a skill. Let's see. Ah, okay. So uh, it's a check that I've got to make then, yeah? No, no, no. Oh, no, it's not that. It's four. I'm so sorry. It's four. I'm so sorry. Four. So I just want to make sure that you're wounded and not unconscious. So you take a wound, uh, which yeah. basically means that uh, you have minus one D to all of your rolls until you get healed for every wound that you have. And you can take a number of wounds equal to your stamina before you go down outright. There we go. That's that's that cool. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, that brings us to Zur. All right. Uh, so, quick uh, preemptive question: To yeah. pull something to you, uh, an object, does that require an actual roll to do, or can we just do that? Um, that's simple enough. Where unless someone was actively like holding the item or trying to get you to not take it, you could just pull it to you with for free on your turn. All right. So that's I'm going to take Jedi shit. <laughs> I'm going to take three actions then this turn. Uh, there's a uh, as his lightsaber ignites, and then <gasps> as the lightsaber from the Jedi on the wall <gasps> will fly into his other hand. Uh, and what Shit. beam <gasps> comes out of that saber? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what what color? Oh, no, I do know. I do know what color it is. Um, a white blade emits out of this saber. The white lightsaber blades are only carried by temple guards, people who give their lives dedicated to preserving Jedi temples and libraries. And so as this lightsaber ignites, you see a fabled white lightsaber blade emit out from it. Yeah, there's the tiniest flash of uh, understanding, uh, sorrow that this uh, like holy guardian uh, was felled in that way. Uh, but then... Uh, that slight bit of determination, uh, which will be bolstered, and I'll use my my second two of my three actions to lunge forward, uh, both lightsabers in hand, uh, to like do a cross swing awesome. at this thing. Uh, one of those I'm going to use a force point to double, Great. Um, and because I have to roll so many things here, I've already rolled a lot of them. So the first <laughs> attack uh, is actually going to be an 18 with a six on the destiny die. Ooh, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the second, the force point uh, roll is going to be uh, like 30, <laughs> I think, <laughs> to doing some quick math. Uh, Both of those hit, definitely. Yeah, so there's this like flash of light, uh, yellow and white, that'll like shed across, uh, blending in with the, the saber of Jace as Zer lunges forward, uh, just bringing both of these sabers down in like a arced cross uh, across this thing. Um, and the first one, uh, damage wise, uh, is the second one just a standard lightsaber damage? I guess I should ask in case it matters. Yeah, just standard. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So the first attack is going to be 20 damage. Okay. And the second is going to be 21 damage. Damn. Zur, go ahead and describe how you kill this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it just like a flash of color and like humming lights. Uh, seeing this thing kind of like reel back and lend a, a, a solid blow against Jace. It will actually be something that Zur will later uh, be ashamed to admit, and he'll hope that other people didn't feel it in the, uh, the rush of the chaos. The tiniest bit of anger that drives this strike uh, feeling just the the sorrow of the fallen Jedi, uh, the rush of adrenaline from this creature and seeing his friend wounded by its claw uh, will lunge forward just as much with vengeance as with protection 
uh, before uh, this like shredding, burning hiss uh, will come off of this creature as this like center of its carcass is just like marked with this scorched X uh, digging deep into its chest, uh, burning vital uh, organs uh, along with plenty other else. Uh, and imagine just this like horrifying stench uh, will fill the chamber uh, as this creature is like burned from the inside by this uh, by the, the dual lightsabers. And just kind of like stand afterwards, just <sighs> kind of breathing uh, in fear uh, and let it, trying to let that anger go so it's not noticed. Zor stands over the smoldering heap of this creature, which uh, he figured out by now is a Gundark. Uh, one yellow bladed lightsaber in hand and the gleaming white blade in the other. The two sabers have different tonalities to them in their hum. And so there's this kind of strange, discordant, sort of wavering sort of hum that comes from Zor as he stands there over the corpse of the Gundark. Uh, Jace, you barely managed to sort of like scoot yourself out of the way as the corpse sort of fell uh, in front of you. Um, you feel warmth as blood pools on your chest from the swipe that this thing uh, took at you. Uh, but seemingly, it was alone. Quiet settles again over the chamber jace uh, immediately falls uh to press his back against cold stone and slides down uh just onto his knees clutching at his wound uh looking down um he probably wouldn't have picked up on what Zer was feeling just then because um again uh he feels that his connection to the force uh he feels inadequacy he made a mistake and he realizes more than ever he shouldn't be teaching anyone Laura is standing somewhat stunned, the blue lightsaber in one hand, the blaster pistol still pointed to where the creature stood moments ago. The surprise and fear and relief that radiate from her are just a mess, all mixed together. She would never have felt Zur's anger in the wake of her own strong emotions. She looks down, presses the button by choice this time rather than instinct. The glow disappears and she holsters her blaster pistol. Whew. Well, that was interesting. The hum of uh, Zer's yellow lightsaber will uh, vanish. Uh, and he'll kind of like linger with the white one in his left hand for a second, kind of like looking at it um, as if trying to like piece something together uh, from it before that one will also slide away. Uh, and he'll look over to Jace. Are you okay? You're hurt. You can see that Jace is uh, reaching into his belongings and he pulls a similar looking mad pack to the one that was used on Kunwei before. <laughs> I may need some assistance with this. It's not too bad, but I need to stop the bleeding. Well, you're in luck. I have had my fair share of experience. I did all right back when we. He only looks a little green around the gills. <laughs> he sits down and kind of just gazes at the light coming through the ceiling as you help uh, Jace. But he feels so much anger in this place, residual, and <clears throat> so much that he's not even sure what the sources are. He wonders if maybe they're within himself. 
He shakes it off and begins to meditate. There's something wrong. Cora's brow furrows. Perhaps it's that the claw marks are too deep, or maybe there's something that was on them. She's applying the med pack and it doesn't seem to be working as expected. And there was also a one on the destiny die in addition to not meeting the 10. Oopsie. The wound was a little bit more dire than Jace let on. As you begin to work, blood flows freely from it, and you realize that there was some sort of venom coating this thing's claws. You see black veins spreading slowly outward from this wound. You're not sure if Jace is aware of it, but you're not going to be able to heal him here. She'll meet your eyes and you can't quite see her full expression for the breather mask. I, it doesn't look good, Jace. I didn't need, I didn't need to be able to sense that to know. Uh, Jace uh, draws in a deep breath. And while this wound is grave, he is going to do his utmost to use the power of the Force to uh, control how his body reacts to this. Now, I don't know exactly what this can be, but he's going to try and use the Force to essentially help him stay alive, basically. I mean, that's exactly what control (laughs) is used for, so yeah. Yeah. So, in fact, you know what? He uh, he actually uh, closes his eyes, and once again, he's in that valley. Uh, the breeze uh, moving around his uh, Jedi cloak, and he looks to his apprentice Skyfalk, uh, and she is attempting to cross a canyon. Uh, on top of a very, very narrow branch that has been felled over this ravine. And she's standing there, uh, perfectly balanced, her breathing in time with the wind that moves through the valley. And that falls into rhythm of Jace's own breathing. You must be able to control every aspect of your being. You must be confident in every breath and sure in every step. You are a Jedi. And with the Force, nothing is impossible. Uh, He rolls a 19 with that roll. So I don't know what that means. there's but, definitely yeah. the a French horn swells up da, 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 as you, uh, Cora, see something you have never seen before. Somebody healing themselves, willing their body to heal itself using the Force. You see Jace with his eyes closed, sweat shining as he concentrates, but his expression serene. And you see the black veins subside, shrinking, and then disappearing. The wound not closing, but the bleeding stops. And the venom seems to have been nullified using the Force. Jace slowly uh, gets to his feet and maybe he presses uh, an arm on Zer's shoulder. Um, giving you a smile uh, and a nod, sort of well done for finishing it. 
Let us continue. If no one else has any objection. Are you well enough to go on? It's not worth risking you for it. We're here. And we must embrace the moment. <coughs> we should press on. We'll kind of give a slow, heavy breath um, and nod. I trust your judgment if you think that you're well enough. Yes. I'll kind of like give a glance out to the others uh, in case there's any objections, uh, but we'll agree. You move on, continuing through the choked corridors of this place. And soon you find yourselves at a dead end. A wall of stone. But that pull is telling you there's something beyond. And as you kind of inspect the wall in the light of the glow rods, you see that the masonry is new, newer than the stone surrounding it. This chamber has been sealed. <clears throat> Something lays beyond. Uh, and he'll like reach down to his belt uh, where his lightsaber uh, hangs uh, right next to where this new one is. Um, and he'll bring it up. Uh, kind of give a quick cursory glance to the others in case someone will go to stop him. Uh, but as long as nobody does, there'll be uh, an, an ignition uh, as the yellow beam will burst forth and he'll just uh, press it into the stone where this new seal has been made uh, and like just begin to melt the stone uh, with the blade until it's enough space to get through. Yeah, there's this classic Star Wars shot where it's just darkness and then suddenly this like circle of molten stone begins to glow and then a blade erupts forth cutting its way through and then a door <laughs> sort of falls as the molten stone falls away light streaming in and all of you look upon a small stone chamber lined with durasteel crates and shelves dusty grimy long abandoned Gotta say, wasn't expecting this in the middle of a spooky temple. <clears throat> this normal Jedi stuff? Who knows what could have been brought here during the war. It's a little underwhelming. There's several different things in here, and you get the sense that this was a storeroom for important Jedi artifacts that they wanted to keep from uh, the Empire following the Purge. There are stone edifices, figurines, things like that, books. All of it is clutter to look at. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what you're looking for. But then, Quinway, you... Sort of looking, glancing. You see a shine of metal sitting on one shelf. It seems out of place. Feeling the call, Quinway makes his way over there slowly, examines what's giving off this reflection. It's like a small object I can pick up. What do I find? It's a data chip. It has a symbol of the Jedi Order on it, the two wings flanking an ignited lightsaber. In that moment, Quinway so much comes rushing back all of a sudden he's 
back during during the battle over those mines. He's participating in the destruction of so much of the Jedi and the destruction of their memory, even within himself. So that he could not potentially be used as a weapon against his own kind, his own people. He reaches into the, the pocket of his prisoner garb. He's still wearing the clothing from the, the purge as actually many of us might be. He, he pulls out the two other items he had with him, the comlink and the tracking beacon. And he holds the chip. <clears throat> is this something that is the chip something that could go into either of those objects? Yeah, you could put it into the comm link to listen to what was on there. He slides the, <clears throat> the chip of the Jedi Order into the comm link. And in the midst of the silence, activates the device. A hazy hologram springs forth over the comm link. The figure is a Jedi wearing robes and Clone Wars era armor. His head is crested by these strange sort of skull, uh, almost like horns, but they crest his skull all around and becomes almost like tentacles trailing down. This is an alien that is known as a Togruta. And as his image springs forth and he begins speaking, Zor, you experience this strange rush of emotion as you recognize the face of your master, Korv Rakash. He speaks. This is Jedi Master Korv Rakash, and this message is intended for Jedi Master Quinn Wei Mox. This message is regarding the Reclamation Protocol. Quinn Wei, if you are reading this message, then I am dead. But you still live to carry on the Reclamation Protocol. The items stored here are of significance to the Jedi Order, pieces of our history that cannot be destroyed, but also cannot be allowed to fall into the hands of Palpatine. Deep inside this temple is hidden a ship. Take these items. Take the ship. Follow the coordinates stored on this data chip. There you will find the temple. The place where we will regroup. The place where we will build anew what was sundered. I have a final request. Quinway, my friend. My Padawan. His name is Zordaran. I lost him during the purge. The reclamation protocol dictated that I see to my duty first and foremost. But I regret to my dying breath that I left him behind. If he lives, find him. Bring him to the temple. Complete his training. Do what I was unable to do. May the Force be with you, my friend. Until we meet again in the next life. The hologram fizzles out. He bows his head deeply, <clears throat> thinking about the next life, about how there is no death, only a change of worlds. There is only the Force. He says his solemn goodbye in silence, and everyone around him feels it. And he looks up to Zerdoran, and really, truly, no words needed to be spoken there. Uh, but Quinway will nod his head 
solemnly towards Zur as a showing of his respect towards the loss. It seems that all of us has, have lost something, but perhaps we can reclaim something else. Looks like we have a ship to find. Zur is 10 years old. Uh, he's standing, uh, crying, trying to like wipe tears from out from behind uh, his Keldor goggles uh, as his master stands above him, uh, stern-faced. You have to control your emotions, Zur. A Jedi must remain in control, always. Even when things are difficult, even when you struggle, that's when you must stand the tallest and the strongest. You have to be a light for the other people to see, to do what they can't, to be the person that they need. And as we like see him continue this speech, uh, we see that he's had to like give this speech to Zer over the years multiple times, uh, something that Zer always struggled with at 10 and then at 13 uh, in a burst of anger, uh, Zer gets this lecture again and then at 17 uh, and then all the way up uh, until like days before uh, the purge happened and it's like rush of everything will hit Zer uh, stronger than any of the blasts that he's taken so far uh, in any of these combats, any of these fears. Um, it'll all bubble up uh, and he'll hear those words uh, in his mind again. You have to control your emotions. You have to stand up. But in this moment, those words feel hollow. They feel impossible an ideal that was always too difficult to reach, uh, that'll go beyond. And that wave of sadness that he'll feel uh, from the master, uh, that understanding of loss uh, will feel like a weight too strong. Uh, he'll be nearly shell-shocked. Uh, he won't say a word, uh, doesn't nod his head, uh, just like stares at this like now blank communicator uh, that no longer uh, show, shows the hologram of his master um, and the force link uh, between everybody would just feel the same rush of anger uh, and frustration uh, that was perhaps missed in the earlier fight uh, come back stronger this time, mixed with just crushing loss, confusion, It was not mere chance that led us to this place, Zur. Coincidence is the residue of fate. Let us continue on this path. He'll try to process those words as best as he can in this state uh, and just kind of like shake his head. He doesn't like know what to say, um, but He'll do what's gotten him this far, and that's to put trust in his master, uh, in his master's plan, in his master's ideals, and in the, the other Jedi masters whose wisdom he shared, uh, especially hearing that this Gunway Mox is one that his master called friend uh, will know that uh, it's the closest thing that he has now to his master's wisdom, that hologram and Quinway Mox's words and feelings next to him uh, and will give a shuddered, struggled nod, uh, understanding that he can't let this consume him down in the depths of this temple, uh, that if his master had a mission, that it's the least he can do to try to see it through. There's a silence that follows this conversation all of you just standing in the green glow of the glow rods, the statuaries, the facades, the books stored here, all of them lit by this shadowed light. And then, Cora, you get this strange prickling at the back of your neck. And soon after, all of you hear engines. 
a ship approaching. And then... <laughs> blaster fire. <laughs> An explosion from above you. Debris and dust come down from the ceiling. You don't need to exchange words. You all know that the shuttle has been destroyed up above. And then, moments later, the force begins to deaden around you. The link grows quiet. The force feels distant. The third sister has found you. And that is where we will end our session for tonight. I'm the worst. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm going to throw it to these guys really quick to uh, do their outros, and then we'll call it a night. We have our third and final session of Star Wars Reclamation in two weeks, uh, and... This has just been a blast so far, and I can't wait to wrap this up and uh, see where it goes. So uh, we're going to start uh, in reverse order. We're going to start with Taylor, if you want to do your outro. Uh, yeah. I don't have a lot to say. This game is just amazing. Uh, like it, it feels like Star Wars should feel, and that is... Uh, down to the players and the GM and the system and everything except for the ads that pop up on YouTube that ruin my music, but everything else is perfect. <laughs> um, really enjoying it. Cannot wait to finish it out in two weeks. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, go ahead. And the, the range of experience you get in a Star <laughs> Wars game, uh, going from like dual wheel lightsaber triumph to like absolutely crushing horror uh, in the span of like 30 minutes uh, is quite the roller coaster, but it's one that I'm very glad to be on. Uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty intense. Uh, not the the turn that I was necessarily expecting. You, see, you got me on that one. I, I, I was, I, I found you out last time, but you got me this time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I swept but, the rug out yeah. from under Jeff Doty. I consider that a victory. <laughs> you did. Uh, yeah, I was I was not prepared for that uh, to be what happened with all that. Um, but yeah, uh, fantastic session as always. Uh, this game is great. Uh, all the other players are great. Uh, the GM is great. Like just everything about this has been like start to finish like gripping, uh, which it's like... There's like really good sessions where it's like there's a lot of really great moments. And then there's those sessions where it's like literally there's not one time that it ever fades. Uh, it's just like constant good <laughs> from start to finish. And that's like what this is uh, for me. Uh, so, yeah, uh, loved it. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. All right. Uh, Barker, do you want to give your outro before you go lay down, go night nights? No, I was going to, but Jeff friggin took all of the smoke blowing so i can't i got none for you none yeah, can you bring me down a peg please talk about <laughs> yeah. how shitty i am yeah i don't know about the uh the G gandark gun i almost said gandalf <laughs> uh the gundark sound effect no it was incredible there's nothing bad i have to say yeah, actually matt what you're really amazing at is you're amazing at taking a very broad idea that i posit in a voice message about i don't know some numbers or what might be at the end of the road here and forming it in a way that's completely brand new and surprising to me the person who even like sent a message in the first place this is like you're really amazing at that and uh yeah i had a migraine happen like two minutes before we went on the air and so i'm sitting in the dark and i've it's been a it's been rough but this game is if, if it were going on for another hour, I would be in for another hour. There's just nothing that would be able to keep me away from it. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that because here we are at the end. Uh, hey, Rob, your outro better not be an hour. No. <laughs> but no, sincerely, thank you guys so much for this game. Uh, 
I'm so excited for the third and final game, yet they're simultaneously dreading it because it's the final game. So, uh, but either way, thanks, guys. Thank you for sticking with it, Barker. And I'm sorry that you have a migraine, man. That is no the problem. pits. I took the wrong medicine too. I told you a while back oh. that there are two medicines that, yeah. w- and I can't take them both. Uh-huh. But if I take the wrong one, then I can't. Then it doesn't get better. And I took. Oh the wrong. no! You need to take the wrong one and put it away. Put it somewhere. <laughs> Never. So, but then the next time it'll be the right one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Rob. Go ahead, man. So I think I can manage about an hour of smoke blowing to make up for that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I can't handle. No, um, yeah. Again, like just going to mirror everything that everyone else has said. What I particularly adore about this game is, obviously, it's really amazing to play Jedi because, as we've discussed before, it's really cool that we can all share like experiences and bonds through the Force in the role playing and stuff. But I think what is really, really interesting to me right now is that these are Jedi who are running scared. Everything. Uh, that makes a Jedi a Jedi is at stake. Uh, and it, it kind of feels like what it is, the twilight of the Jedi of the Jedi Order. It is the, it is the decline and the eventual fall. And I think it's something that's deliciously Star Wars because it's a descent into darkness. And, but there's hope. There is hope in this story, which is, has been rekindled. I will also say once again that I love this system so much so that I think I am going this is what I thought would be quite funny I'm going to de- uh, commit myself to running a game of hyperspace D6 and I'm going to run it in whatever the state the Star Wars universe is in after episode 9 so oh, <laughs> however it's nice. left awesome. yeah. I'm going to see if I can carry it on with the D6 hyperspace and we'll Dips. see Dips. <laughs> yeah for sure, for sure. Okay, cool but yeah, thanks once again. Incredible game. Really great players. Uh, amazing to share this with you all. Since uh, you guys have done a really good job of uh, doing some smoke blowing in my direction, I just want to let you all know that I like. I absolutely love running this game, and it's literally no work on my part because I just throw things at you guys and you respond to it so well. And like... This campaign is, I really wanted to like play with the force and like what you could do with the force and everything that you guys do with the force. I'm just like, yeah, absolutely. You could do that. Like pulling things down on top of people. You Like the mind link has been such a cool thing to play around with and like utilize in role play and things like that. So uh, literally couldn't have better players for this. So thank you guys for joining me on this, uh, on this trilogy and just, being a bunch of badass role players, man. So uh, thank you everyone for watching. Again, links down in the description for Hyperspace D6, Absolute Tabletop, Patreon, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Check it out down there. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time on Star Wars Reclamation. Take care, happy gaming all, and may the Force be with you.